Today we are going to talk about vaccine hesitancy and why it's so important to be vaccinated. When it comes to vaccine hesitancy, it is clear that we have a relationship problem, especially when it comes to trust and not necessarily misinformation. There is an abundance of scientific information to debunk false rumors, but I do feel that misinformation is the symptom and not necessarily the cause because if people trust, they'll put up with a little bit of risk to advert a much bigger problem. So it's important that we talk about what we can do here today to instill some type of trust and confidence within the community um, when it comes to the product and also the providers of the COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you, um, Professor Kevin and Dr. Mecca, for joining me today. So there's a lot of concerns about whether, you know, this vaccine is safe, is efficacious. I was wondering if you could talk us through the safety um, and the efficacy of this vaccine. We hadn't really been in a situation where we'd experienced a pandemic and so many people falling ill and dying with coronavirus. So there are a number of different resources which were pushed towards producing a vaccine as quickly as possible. But we have to look and remember that there were thousands of people who were um, part of these trials and there were trials going on all over the world. So when people are looking at in terms of the speed of the vaccine, it's not really how quickly it was produced, it's how safely it was produced. And knowing that it's gone through the checks that all the different vaccines go through, it's fair enough to say that it should be completely fine going forward. With COVID, the severity and scale of the pandemic has meant that governments have been focused on this. Funding has been unlike we have ever seen in terms of vaccine research. And we've had scientists from many countries working at the same time to find an effective vaccine. So that in itself helped to shorten the period because we had more investment and faster research. And it also changed the way we approve vaccines because we were able to do many studies together at the same time, instead of doing each study sequentially, which often took a long time. Thank you. Um, Dr. Mika, a lot of people are concerned also if it causes fertility issues. From the information we have at the moment, there is no clinical evidence to suggest that there's any adverse effect on fertility. This has been dispelled by the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecology and Midwifery. And we can know going forward that there is no clinical evidence or any evidence to suggest that this is abnormal for people who are worried about fertility. So this is a good thing for everybody. Professor Kevin, the low uptake of the COVID-19 vaccine among the BAME community is something that has been well documented. Now, the government are driving campaigns led by medical experts um, and trusted voices within the community. Can you talk to me a little bit more um, about these campaigns? So vaccine hesitancy or sometimes a lack of confidence that people have in the vaccine can really have a material impact on making them not access the vaccine and getting the jabs to protect themselves. So that hesitancy that has been described is a real concern. And that's why we need to have these conversations to help to dispel myths and misinformation, to provide the facts about the vaccine, to be absolutely clear about how you can access the vaccine, and to be clear about the evidence on the effectiveness. Because if this is helping everybody else in the community, we want to ensure that our community is also well protected as well. This pandemic has been so hard on so many of our communities across the country. And unfortunately, Black, Asian and minority ethnic communities have been disproportionately affected by COVID. Now, it's not the color of our skin that makes us at high risk but it's the kinds of jobs we do, the size and complexity of our households, the way we mix in our communities that can place us at increased risk of acquiring the infection. And when infected, if we have chronic conditions like diabetes or lung disease or any sort of chronic medical condition, that can lead to more severe disease. And this is why with an effective vaccine, it's really important that all of us take full advantage of the vaccine. Because for our community, getting that extra protection is really going to be key as we emerge from lockdown and as we re-emerge into our society. Uh, I know a lot of people are concerned about the contents of the vaccine and if there are any animal products in it. Um, could you talk to us a little bit more about this? The ways in which the vaccine developed was developed means that we have a really good understanding of its content and how it works and its effectiveness. And I can reassure you 
There are no pork uh, materials included in the vaccines. There are no fetal materials which are included in the vaccines. The vaccines do not have microchips in them. The vaccine's main content is going to be both water as well as the sort of chemicals which are required to stabilize the vaccine so it can be safely administered in your arm. I guess my question here is, is there any side effects of this vaccine? Well, what's really encouraging is that the side effect profile of the vaccine is very similar to other vaccines that we're very, very used to using. The most common side effects are really mild side effects, and they're exactly the ones that you tend to see, for example, with the flu vaccine and other vaccines that adults or children may have. And that is a bit of pain at the uh, injection site, at the vaccination site. Some people may feel a bit uh, tired, achy, uh, having a bit of chills. Generally, it lasts for no more than 24 hours and it can be easily managed by taking paracetamol or brufa. What advice would you give to um, individuals who, or women who are breastfeeding or who are pregnant and want to get this vaccine? I suggest to any woman who was thinking about it to go and speak to their GP, speak to their medical professionals if they're under a midwife or obstetrician for more information. This is because it's an individualistic thing. Different women have different risks in pregnancy, let alone in taking vaccines during pregnancy. So it's important that they're very well informed and can make an informed decision based on the information given by their health professional. Dr. Mecca, I know you are first line um, and you see a lot of young people. Now, there is a lot of myths about young people being low risk to contracting the virus. And because of this, they feel like they don't need to be vaccinated. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? It's very important that younger people know that one, you can contract the disease. And two, just because it affects people who are older more severely, it doesn't mean that it can't affect you too. And it doesn't mean that you can't spread it to someone you love. So it's important that younger people are keeping themselves safe, keeping their hands clean, keeping their space and keeping their face masks and masks on when necessary. Thank you, Dr. Emeka and Professor Kevin for joining me here today to talk about vaccine hesitancy and why it's so important for the population to be vaccinated. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. I hope this was informative. If you have any other questions, make sure you visit www.nhs.uk slash COVID vaccine.